The final trailer for Halloween Kills is here. As always guys, my name is Jimmy Champagne and if you like monsters, slashers, pretty much any movie shot during, set during, or inspired by the 1980s, this is the channel for you. So if that sounds cool, set your notifications to all when you subscribe. So a couple videos back we talked about how at CinemaCon, Universal showed off a brand new trailer for Halloween Kills and I predicted that we would see it in the next couple weeks and here we are because there just isn't that much time to actually show off a trailer. And this is being dubbed the final trailer for Halloween Kills and you know what, I think it's even better than it sounded being described by someone else who clearly didn't know anything about Halloween. I guess that's not really a high bar to clear. Obviously, I'm gonna jump right in and break this whole thing down, but if you're really sensitive to spoilers, you're probably going to wanna click away from this one. I will say, overall, it's less spoilery than the ones we saw for Halloween 2018, but still, if you really wanna see my spoiler-free thoughts on this stuff, just follow me on Twitter. It's linked down in the description. So the biggest thing we got in this trailer is just, I guess, confirmation of what the story's gonna be in this movie. So the town of Haddonfield is basically trying to intercept Michael as he works his way from way out on the edge of town where he's at, at Lori's house, which is burning down. He escapes. He's walking his way from there all the way to his childhood home, the Myers house, which side note is now just occupied by people. It looks like they renovated the house. I'm sure they got a great deal just based on what happened in 1978 and the fact that it was like totally in disrepair by the time that movie started. So yeah, they probably got a good deal on the house and the land, but they had to do a lot of renovation to get it looking how it looks in this trailer. It's kind of funny because that's one of the earliest things we saw in the Halloween Kills marketing. I didn't really realize it was the Myers house at the time. I think I thought it was like an old person home, but now it's very clear that it's the Myers house in 2018 because that's when this movie takes place. And just knowing that that's where Diva Tyler apparently dies in this movie and knowing how much she already spoiled when she was on the set of the movie, it's crazy that she didn't spoil that her scenes take place in the Myers house. I'm glad that that was kept a secret, at least up until now. Like it's been out there for a bit along with the script, but yeah, now we know for sure that there's going to be scenes taking place in the Modern Myers house because that's where the movie's most likely going to end. Anyway, like in that description we already heard, Lindsay is out with Marion Chambers and the couple from Halloween 2018, and she's looking for Michael Myers. She goes to a park where there's some kids on the swings, and they're like, yeah, we're out trick-or-treating, and we were playing hide-and-seek with this guy in a scary white mask. Clearly, totally oblivious to the fact that it's Michael Myers, and he could kill them at any moment, and she's obviously freaking out, but then she turns around, and sees Michael jump on the car where Marion Chambers is, and he gets to recreate the intro of Halloween 1978 where he steals the car from Dr. Loomis and Marion Chambers. We see him slam the window just like he did in that movie. That's a really cool Easter egg. We've seen that before. I just think it's awesome. But yeah, this is one of the big spoilers from the trailer. This is where it's basically 100% confirmed that Marion Chambers is going to die because in other trailers, we've seen her dead body with one of the Halloween 3 masks on it, and just seeing how brutal Michael is in this part of this trailer, there's no way she's making it out of there. Obviously, I think Lindsay Wallace is going to make it out of this scene, but yeah, Marion Chambers, definitely gonna die along with the, that couple from Halloween 2018. All three of them, done. And just because people love to comment implied information, yes, the couple is also going to be wearing the Halloween 3 masks. I know, I saw it in the other trailers. No need to point it out. We also get a bunch of shots that take place in Haddonfield Memorial Hospital itself, and it looks great when you see it from the outside. The signage looks like it's just taken out of Halloween 2, which is exactly how I wanted them to do it. I love Easter eggs like that, that pay homage to the movies that they cut out from the timeline. I think that was super smart. I love that the hospital's showing up. The logo looks great. The scenes on the inside of the hospital are also looking pretty cool. Lori's going to be shacked up there for pretty much the entire movie, I think. We also get a comeback from the worst sheriff of all time, just sitting around talking instead of actually doing something about Michael Myers. It's good that he's continuing his character arc from the first movie of uh, just not doing anything, really just kind of sitting around in his cowboy hat talking. I guess at least he does let Karen and Allison and Lori know that Michael escaped her house. So he's relaying some important information, but yeah, this guy, probably not gonna win the re-election for Sheriff. I'm just gonna, uh, you know, make that call right now. We also get a shot of the mob standing outside the hospital screaming evil dies tonight. I think we've seen that in plenty of other trailers, but now we get to see it again. And because of those negative reviews, this scene is contextualized a little bit. So if you really don't want any spoilers, this one's really minor, but just click away again. Anyway, remember in Halloween 2018 when that father and son roll up on the bus that's crashed that Michael escaped from, and we see all those Smith's Grove patients walking around in the creepy fog. It's a great shot. It's very 
memorable. So I guess what happens is when this mob is going out and looking for Michael Myers, they actually encounter one of those escaped patients from Smith's Grove and accidentally kill him. Yes, they are pulling back the Ted Hollister moment from Halloween 4. And honestly, I think it's going to work very well in this movie because when you think about it, the idea of Michael being able to take on a whole town is kind of just a little bit out there. But if we see that they're so dead set on hunting him down and killing him, which again is what's shown by them killing the wrong person, I think that's going to make it more believable that Michael would be able to kill that many people. And that's fine with me. That's good justification. Also, just like every other trailer we've seen for this movie, this one gives me the feeling that 2018 was him waking up, rubbing the sleep out of his eyes, shaking off some of the dust with some creative kills. But this one is him in his fully unleashed awake mode. Like he's ready to go. He's ready to take on the entire town of Haddonfield. And we're going to get to see some absolutely brutal stuff. And I'm glad they didn't show more of it in the trailers. Like as far as the trailers go, they've all really been pulling from the same scenes, but just showing us different shots from them. I know the last one showed a few of the kills, but we've heard that that was just like a small percentage of the kills in the actual movie. And just because they've been hiding so much of it, I honestly believe them. David Gordon Green said that he fought really hard to hide the best moments from the movie. And it, it seems like he got his wish, but we can definitely see the parts of that fight that Universal won because in this trailer, we get just a few shots of the flashback, but boy, are they cool. So the first one is of course, Michael as a kid standing there in his clown costume. Now I'm not really sure whose perspective this is because if we're looking into a flashback into Michael's memories, it might be a little bit weird. This is another minor spoiler. So maybe click away if you don't want to hear it. If you're still here, this probably won't offend you, but we all know that Hawkins survived Halloween 2018 at this point. And I feel like this is going to be him telling his story of the night Michael Myers was apprehended because obviously that was supposed to happen in Halloween 2018, but John Carpenter told David Gordon Green to hold off on it. And then they did. And now it makes sense that they're pulling it back in because they have double the budget on this movie. They can afford to do a flashback scene to the 1970s and kind of flesh it out a little bit more, which brings me to the next thing we see, which is Loomis standing on the porch of the Myers house with Michael Myers in between him and a bunch of cops pointing their guns at him. We get to see how Michael was apprehended after the first movie, because as we know in Halloween two, it just picks up from him falling off the balcony. But now we see that no Loomis and the cops are able to apprehend him. And I know it's like a super wide shot of Loomis and Michael in the flashback costume. And it's really blocky in this 1080p upload we got, but I want to say that they look really good. Like Loomis looks like Loomis to me. His face isn't detailed enough to really make a judgment call. Hopefully they got a better actor for his voice than they had in Halloween 2018. I know I'm in the minority there because people think it's totally believable, but just as someone who's seen these movies hundreds and hundreds of times, it's very easy to tell that it isn't Loomis. So hopefully either that guy's got a little more practice for this movie if Loomis is going to talk or they found a better voice actor for the part. Now, Michael, on the other hand, is a little contentious for some people because while the jumpsuit looks exactly how it's supposed to, the mask is very clearly just a cleaned up de-aged version of the Halloween 2018 mask. And I know that some people are upset about that, but really they had a judgment call to make there, right? If they go with the exact mask, like maybe even a cleaned up version of the Trick or Treat Studios 1978 mask, it looks different than the 2018 mask. Like the 2018 version looks incredible. It looks like a meaner, more aged version of the 1978 mask. But if you're cutting back and forth between the flashback and 2018, I feel like it would be a little bit jarring to use the original mask exactly. So I feel like they're probably finding a good middle ground here. And to me, it looks great. I hope they release that version of the mask, like the flashback one, not just like coming out and saying, oh, that 78 one we sell at Trick or Treat Studios is the one that was used in the movies. Because even with this blocky out of focus shot, you can see that it is clearly a little bit different. I think this is a great trailer and I think it's good that Universal put some effort this time around into only using different shots from the same scenes in each trailer we got. I know the wait was long with this marketing and that must have been really hard to do because they had to drip feed it. But we also did get a lot of trailer type content for this movie. Like every few months we were getting something new and just to see it all combined together in one final trailer that still isn't really showing all that much more than what we originally saw way back when the first stuff started to drop. That's really good. And I feel like it should be pointed out because we all know that Universal is notorious for just putting the end of the movie in their trailers. Like I remember when Halloween 2018 came out like a week or two before it, they were giving IGN scenes like full scenes from the end of the movie just to throw up on their YouTube channel. And obviously there's still about a month left. We've got 25 days. They could always disappoint us. I know, I know, but I want to tell them good job. So maybe they'll think about it more in the future. And ever since the movie premiered, 
premiered at the Venice Film Festival and people who have read the script have started hearing what happens in the actual movie, I've heard from a few people who I know for a fact have read the script and know a lot about movies that they're actually going in and changing a lot of what happens in the third act. So since people have been spoiling everything from the movie on my comments and I've been having to ban them, which means I've been having to read the comments and people have been like DMing them to me on Twitter thinking I want to hear that, despite the fact that in every video I've said, do not spoil the movie because I will ban you from the channel and I don't want to hear it, super frustrating. I'm glad that I actually don't know everything that's going to happen in this movie. Like they went ahead and changed some stuff in that long gap they had. It's like, nice to know. Like that's cool. And it just kind of goes to show what I've been saying for months now is right. Don't put all your faith in sources. They're usually getting the info second or third hand. And by the time you hear it, I mean, we've all played the game of telephone. I don't really need to explain how that works. But yeah, the sources were wrong. Once again, don't always trust that stuff. Here's a clear cut example. And now that we got the trailer talk out of the way, let's talk about this peacock situation. I'm not gonna go super deep into it because I know you guys have probably heard about it a ton at this point. But basically what's going on is that Halloween Kills day and date is coming to Peacock. October 15th. If you have a subscription, you can just watch it. It's not like Disney Plus where you got to pay 30 bucks or what Universal was doing on Amazon Prime where you got to pay 20 to rent it. It's just like on there. And Peacock is pretty cheap. I think it's like five bucks a month. So on October 15th, you can watch Halloween for five bucks. Now, obviously, a lot of people think this is cool because Peacock is cheap. They can watch it at home. They were worried that theaters wouldn't be open by the time they're able to go. I get all of that. But for me, I'm kind of conflicted on it. I don't want to make it seem like I don't understand why they did it because I completely do. If you look at what's coming out in theaters around this movie it's very competitive and when you look at what movies have been making money there's really no rhyme or reason to it like black widow had a huge drop off in its second week but shang chi seems to be doing all right even though it wasn't released in china which is where it probably would have done really well dune is out overseas and it's number one pulling in a lot of money like stuff just doesn't make sense right now and when you look at halloween kills i personally think it probably would have done just fine in theaters and i still think it's going to do just fine in theaters i see why universal thinks they could probably make even more money on the back end though, selling some Peacock subscriptions. But honestly guys, from Peacock's standpoint, I don't think this is a super smart move. Like objectively, yeah, it's gonna bring in a lot more subscriptions, but I don't think a lot of those people are gonna stick around because if you look at Peacock's catalog, they just don't have a lot of stuff. I think their biggest selling point is The Office. Like they have a whole subscription tier based around having the entire series of The Office. So when that's your only draw along with Halloween Kills, I think a lot of people are just gonna subscribe for the $5 or whatever it costs for one month and then bail. Like you can just subscribe and then cancel the auto renew so you're only paying for one month. You know, it just doesn't seem that smart, especially considering they don't have that much stuff coming to the service. Like there's a Chucky show coming out on October 12th. You'd think it would be smart of them to also make that day and date on Peacock, right? Like there's just weird stuff going on with that service. I don't think it's really well thought out at all. But if you're worried about Halloween ends, I feel like this decision means we're totally safe. Like whatever Halloween kills makes in theaters, it doesn't really matter now because even though Universal owns Peacock, Peacock still had to pay Universal. Like when Warner Brothers puts their stuff on HBO, they're not just putting it on there for free technically. Like HBO still has to pay Warner Brothers for the right to stream all these movies. And the same thing goes for Peacock. I think it goes without saying, but I'm definitely going to see this movie at least a couple times in theaters. I just can't imagine watching a new Halloween movie for the first time at home with like my phone there, people talking, the lights on stuff like that. I want to be fully immersed in this movie in pitch black with a huge screen watching Michael Myers slaughter the town of Haddonfield. I don't feel like that's too much to ask for, but on Halloween night, I'm probably going to watch it at home. And the last thing I want to cover real quick for you guys is that Universal was kind enough to invite me to Halloween Horror Nights this year once again. It was so much fun. They had awesome mazes like A Haunting of Hill House. They had a Bride of Frankenstein one that's like a sequel to the movie that was like a what if Bride of Frankenstein became Dr. Frankenstein and revived the other Frankenstein monster. That was probably, uh, I don't want to say my favorite. It was definitely my second favorite one. They had the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre back. That was an incredible haunt that I've never done before because I've been to Halloween Horror Nights a few times and they tend to recycle some stuff. But one that was improved that they did recycle was Halloween 4. That was obviously my favorite. They had every moment from the movie that I wanted to see, including the intro, which I really wasn't expecting. They had the scarecrow pumpkin sitting on the bench and I was just like, man, this is cool. I did think it was kind of funny that Loomis had to wear a mask, but you were going through the haunt 
saw it pretty quick. And they even had a Jamie Lloyd holding a knife in her clown costume. Like the detail here is just incredible. Like I wasn't getting scared in a lot of these haunts, but I feel like they're more made for people like me who love the movies and want to see scenes from the movies brought to life in really good detail. And that's exactly what they delivered on. I was so excited, especially after Halloween Horror Nights had to be canceled last year. This was a good comeback showing for them. And if you haven't gone yet, I highly recommend it. Just definitely buy the Fast Pass. The lines get super long at this event and you're just gonna wanna be able to go right through it like I did. It was so much fun.